Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ, breaking down the latest AP Top 25 poll earlier for you. But what will the new college football playoff rankings look like? Well, here's what our own Brad Crawford predicts the new rankings will look like come Tuesday. These are not his final rankings. Something that does stand out here, Brad still has BYU in the top 12 at 10, even after their loss to Kansas this weekend. In the SEC, Georgia does move up three spots from last week in his rankings, and at, that is after their win over Tennessee. They're just one spot behind Bama and the Vols still lurking at 12. Meanwhile, the Big Ten, you see there has four of the top five spots, Notre Dame at six. So I'm going to give the floor here first to our own Leger Doosable to kind of pick apart these rankings. <laughs> and I know, why don't we start with BYU? Yeah, I, we already talked about this earlier. Yeah. I don't see BYU being in the top uh uh, so he's got him in the top 10, but in the mm -hmm. top 12 period, just because, again, a home loss to Kansas, who, yes, they're currently hot right now, Jordan, but then they don't have a winning record. They essentially have to, and essentially, they have to win out to even become bowl eligible. I think the committee will hold that against them. And I would say, when you look at the ratings, right, and the rankings that we've seen, teams that have been undefeated, right, mm -hmm. BYU, Indiana, they don't put them as a top two or three team mm -hmm. because of schedule or lack thereof, right? So, like, when you look at BYU, right, they do have a good out-of-conference win versus SMU, but then when you look at the Big 12, it's not as strong as some of these other conferences like the Big 10 or the SEC. So when you lose to a team that doesn't have a winning record, I think the committee will punish them for that. All right, how about number eight there? Alabama ahead of Georgia. Have a problem with that, or is that just right? No, that's right, because okay. Alabama beat them head-to-head. -head, yep. right? It's hard for you to put a team ahead of a team that beats you head-to-head -head when you guys have essentially the same record, so have no issue with that again. But just one spot behind them? You have no issue? Yeah, okay. I don't have an all issue right. with that at all. Again, then no Miss two spots behind them, even though Ole Miss did beat Georgia head to head. They took a bad loss to Kentucky early in the year. So I think that's justifiable right now. Brad having Ole Miss right there at 11 and uh, Bama at eight and nine. But I think SMU should be in the top 12. I honestly do. When you look at it again now, BYU could hurt them going down the stretch if BYU continues this trend of playing with fire and continuing to lose games, then that could hurt that that loss SMU took mm -hmm. to them. But SMU, again, is one of the most complete teams in all of football. I think they've been punished because they're in the ACC. Again, if they were in the Big 12, again, who knows what their record would be, but look at Indiana, right? They're in the top five because they're undefeated, and they haven't played the strength of the Big 10, but they're not getting punished for it. I don't think SMU should be punished for that as well. So when the first playoff rankings came out two weeks ago, a lot of us argued that BYU was underrated at number nine, mm -hmm. right? So last week, the committee corrected itself from the first rankings, putting BYU six. Yep. So now yep. after the Cougars' first loss, I just think they're going to keep them in that 10-11 range. And right now, I think the team on the outside looking in is Tennessee. I've got them 12, but we know Boise State's going to get that G5 bid. Mm -hmm. That's going to knock Tennessee mm -hmm. out. So really, Tennessee, in my opinion, was the big loser in Week 12 because they had a chance to go to Athens. They were only one of three SEC teams with Texas and A&M being the other two in control of their own destiny still. But Nico and that offense could not get it done against Georgia. So I've, I've got Tennessee slipping. I've got BYU falling from six to 10. And I still think even though the Big 12 is going to be a one big league, BYU wins out. They're going to be in. Yeah, Brad, so it's I'm funny. I'm not predicting that, though. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think they're going to win out either. They've been playing with fire this whole season. Funny thing is, I don't know if you remember, it was like four or five weeks ago, I, uh -huh. I put a scenario out there that Boise State being one of the top four conference champs, right? Just because I knew the scenario with the Big Possible. 12 yeah. could potentially happen. And now it's actually unfolding between our eyes. So what happens if Boise State is a top four conference championship by ranking, right? They get the, the, the buy, and that leaves a spot open for another group of five mm -hmm. team, albeit maybe it's Tulane, maybe it's... Army, depending on what happens these next couple games. Yeah, that's a great point to bring up. Mm -hmm. um, all right, you guys, uh, you know, after the second college football playoff rankings were released, we really got a, a better idea of how the committee views these teams week after week. Before I get your opinions yeah. on what you think the committee will be prioritizing, I do want you to hear what head coach for Georgia, Kirby Smart, <laughs> had to say. Like, take a listen to this. I don't know what they're looking for. I really don't. I wish they could really define the criteria. I wish they could do the eyeball test where they come down here and look at the people we're playing against and look at them. And, you know, you can't see that stuff on a TV. 
and so I don't know what they look for, but that's that's for somebody else to decide. I'm worried about our team. They're not in that environment. They're not at Ole Miss in that environment playing against that defense, which is top five in the country with one of the best pass rushers in the country, and they're fired up. They got a two-score lead, and they're coming every play. They, they don't know that. They don't understand that. All right, Coach doesn't know what the committee is looking for. Brad, do you know? Do you know what they're prioritizing? Then, then Kirby, why not make it the SEC Invitational? Then? And, <laughs> exactly. And put SEC teams in. Look, you you can't lose three games. If if Georgia would have lost to Tennessee last night, I don't I don't care how many quality elite wins they have. Nine and three, don't even make your conference championship game. Expect to be in a 12-team playoff. That's not why we expanded the playoff. It, I mean, is it? I think the committee does look at strength of schedule, but only when it is trying to separate teams of, of like value. I think we saw last week Indiana at number five or six right there hovering. Indiana needs to not only play well against Ohio State, just make sure they don't get blown out because mm -hmm. the scenario where an 11-1 Indiana may not get in over a 10-2 Texas, 10-2 Tennessee. I know Kirk Sinetti and the Hoosiers don't want to hear that right now, but it's clear that the SEC, Greg Sankey, Kirby Smart now, they're kind of petitioning for this over these next few weeks that, hey, we're in the SEC. We play a tougher schedule than most Big Ten teams do. So it's going to be very interesting here the next couple of weeks. Yeah, Brad, that was yeah. the perfect word to use, right? But I would say, I take it a step further, politicking is what he was doing <laughs> for the SEC. Yeah. I know people have talked about four, maybe five SEC teams getting in the top 12. Right, and I think the committees will look at strength of schedule, right? That will be a real thing. Indiana, to your point, right, they're up against it when it comes to that. So they can't get boat raced by Ohio State in Columbus this week coming up. They have to make it look good. Now, you don't hear coaches often say, you mean we had a good loss, right? There's no such thing as a good loss. There's no moral victories, right? And that's why Indiana is at the spot where they're at because they've won every week. Like, you can say what you want about their schedule. They've actually made it look pretty easy besides that one Michigan game. Everybody else, they boat race. So I have no problem with them being that high, but I think the committee will factor in strength of schedule. And it'll be interesting, right, if Indiana does go on to lose to Ohio State, right? How do they match that up between a two-loss Tennessee, a two-loss Georgia, or a two-loss Ole Miss? Uh, it'll be interesting. To see. Well, I think you brought up a good point earlier, and it it, it makes sense that it's hard to win. It's hard in, in any conference week after you week. Be congratulated week. for that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, and we saw exactly um, kind of what happened with BYU. But it's clear that we did see the committee yeah. with the second playoff rankings that were released pa this past Tuesday favor the SEC with five teams in the rankings. All right, before we go to break, some important college football dates to highlight here. Here are the dates you need to know. Selection Sunday is December 8th, with the first round of the college football playoff beginning on December 20th, and with the national title game on January 20th. That is in Atlanta, Georgia.